Morning, beautiful people. Still with the tie-dye. Working on experiments with color. Oh, it's so hard to turn lights on in the morning. How y'all doing? Things are getting weird, aren't they? Rough and weird. All right, so... As you can tell by the title, we're talking about fucking up. Let's sit over coffee and talk about your last fuck up. Fuck ups are insidious because Unlike all other things, this one's your fault. Like, you did it. And if you're already having a rough time beating yourself up, if you already work really hard and you're not seen for who you are, if you're already struggling with panic and anxiety, if you're struggling with self-love, knowing your place here or your value or your worth, then all these times that we have coffee together, the cats have the zoomies, they're playing, that's, that's what you're eating. Then all these times that we talk about over coffee, those are challenging and difficult and, and you didn't do anything wrong, you know? But when you make a mistake, like that really sucks. It hurts deep because then on top of everything else, like, you fucked up. It takes a healthy person, a strong person, to make a mistake and be okay with it. And the reason why I wanted to talk to you is because this is the first thing that I learned in therapy years ago. Like, I'm cool. I fuck up. I hate it, depending on how bad it is. I own it. I apologize. I try to fix it. But I don't beat myself up. Like, we're allowed to make mistakes. It was one of the first things I really grasped because I was so abused when I made a mistake. A lot of people are. It's crazy. But also, it's hard to be a parent, you know? And when you're stressed out and strung out and then your kid just screws something up and it's gonna cost you more time or more money, it's so easy to just yell. Like, I see how parents can do that. But I took extra care when I was raising mine to make sure no matter how stressed I was, <clears throat> if a problem was because one of them made a mistake to go out of my way to make sure that it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> and I did drawings, you know, for uh, a Zoom meeting because I do Zooms with my patrons every month. But I did a drawing for 20 people to have a Zoom meeting with me. And I pulled from the people that are subscribed to, they gave me their email on my website. And I send a newsletter out like a couple of times a month, like very rarely. And it's just like a list of dates of things that are going on, whatever. But just sort of like as a thank you, I pulled from those 20. And just in case there were errors or mistakes or people couldn't come, I threw an extra 10 people in there. And then I didn't show up. Like, I was looking forward to that so... I can't even tell you how much I was looking forward to that. And it blows my mind that it could mean that much to me. That I could think about it every single day. And then the day of, wake up with it completely gone from my mind. So, I check my calendar every single day. Every morning I have a calendar. And I checked that morning and there was nothing on my calendar because I calendared it wrong. 
I put it on the wrong place. So not only did I not wake up thinking about it, which I know why I did that, I also put it, it it's like, ah. Oh. So when I started getting messages after the fact from people, where were you, where my heart sank. The self-hate, the implosion, the anger, the shame, like, oh my God, I was upset with myself. I couldn't sleep. I cried, I was so upset. And that's the first time I've done that much self-hate in a long time. Cause like, I know I'm allowed to make a mistake, but that one was just huge. So I apologized. I went and set a new one and I sent the emails out again to everybody. I mean, that's all you can do, you know? So this time, only one person showed up, and everybody else said they tried to get in, could get, tried to get in, and could didn't. It's early. It's seven o'clock in the morning. But then, like three people said they waited an hour, I guess, in case they were in the wrong time zone. And the three of them got in and talked to themselves, to each other, whatever. But I was there when I said I would be there, and there was only one person there. So it's likely a time zone issue, because I had a meeting before that. And that's why they wouldn't have been able to get in. And then the hour that they tried to come later, we had just probably closed the meeting, me and the one other person that showed up. But I didn't close the room, and so the others were able to meet each other. And they all express disappointment. But see, now this makes me look like it's my fault again and like I'm a flaky individual and you can't rely on me to do anything. And why would I even offer something if I'm not even going to supply it or bring it or whatever? This gets really into deep levels of difficulty and shame. I know. I checked all the settings. I know I didn't do anything wrong. I'm still going to get on customer support just to make sure that they didn't upgrade it or change, make some changes to it or something that I'm not aware of. Plus, America gets on daylight savings time and that just makes it even worse for people in other countries. It's like, and I'm okay now. I mean, I, I'm not beating myself up about it this time, but it just sucks. But my reaction to all of this was, I am never doing this again. I'll never give away a Zoom meeting again. And I know that feeling. There's a correct way to make a decision and then there's that way. And I could feel it, it was a defense mechanism and not a well thought out thing. So I was like, you know, this has been an, a, a big thing that I should probably talk to y'all about because it's so insidious how other people treat you when you make a mistake. These people were amazing, so beautiful, so caring, so patient. But also, you know, there have been times in your life where people have just raked you over the coals and treated you so badly when you've made a mistake. It's the weirdest thing. And here's the thing. When people treat you really bad, especially bad when you make a mistake, that's they're carrying that red flag saying, I'm an extremely sick individual. Because anyone who's going to take advantage of someone when they're down is especially sick. So, I've done things before, like on social media, answer a question and, and answered it wrong because I missed a line maybe in the original post. And then I get mocked. You should learn to read. And then a bunch of people piling on, you know, what are you doing here? Why are you in this group? You can leave now. Here's the door. And you know, don't let the door hit you on the way out. And it's like, I just get, it's just awful. And, but instead of feeling ashamed and like embarrassed, it was a mistake. 
I did read the post thoroughly, but clearly I missed one sentence. It just didn't register and it made all the difference in the answer. And I will leave the group, but not <laughs> because they told me to or I felt ashamed. I'm like, wow, you know what? I'm not the problem here. Yeah, I made a mistake, but that doesn't mean that I am a broken person and that I should leave. I should leave because if this is how this group's going to react to a mistake, this is not the kind of place I wanna be. And I've done like temporary jobs as a contractor for people that if I misunderstood something, which being autistic, holy crap, the major symptom of being a neurodivergent human being and not typical is that we are very literal. And neurotyp neurotypical people tend to speak in double entendres and innuendos and layers of intention. They don't say what they mean and mean what they say. Most of the time though, being very literal is okay because you get it right. But sometimes being literal, you just get it very wrong. And I've had them just come after me. As a seller of things, I've been selling things online for, I don't know, since the beginning of the internet. And if something goes wrong or something broke, like I made a mistake in packaging or something and it, and it broke, which is rare, but it happens. Something gets lost. I packed the wrong item. I've done that before. I've done that like three times over the last 20 years. These are mistakes. And some people are okay with it. They're really disappointed. But man, some people, you're trying to scam me. That's the big one. You're trying to scam me. You're a scammer. I'm going to report you. You shouldn't be on the internet. Like, all right, it's called a mistake. And the reason that I'm talking to you about this is because how are you with mistakes? Because if you're struggling with being okay, have you noticed that when you make a mistake and then they come at you, that you just automatically forget that it was a mistake and you instantly take on the blame and the shame and the self-hate and you get smaller and smaller and then you apologize profusely. You say, I'll fix it. I'll do whatever. You're right. You're so right. I'm so sorry. You're right. You're so, I'm sorry. You're right. And then you do whatever they say you should do. Like you should send me another item. You should send me a free item. You should completely tear it down and redo it. You need to do this again next Saturday. Well, then you need to stay and you need to fix this, this, and this, and you do it. Did they take advantage of you? Did you really make, make it good and make it right? Or did they go overboard and make you really pay? Like punishment. Did you do it willingly? Did you even question it? I am gonna tell you something and I need you to listen. Honey, listen. Listen. Right now, I give you permission to make a mistake. And I grant you the right to apologize, correct the mistake only, and move on. Officially, from this moment forward. Got it? You deserve it because you're human. It's yours now. Take it, own it, behave accordingly. It is sick when people take advantage of you when you make a mistake. You know what a loving and good person would do that you deserve to have around you? They would see that it was a mistake 
They would say, it's okay. If they're disappointed, they would express the disappointment. Furthermore, they would feel empathy for you. This is what that would look like. Oh, wow. I only got this instead of this. I am really disappointed. Like, I really, really needed this. But it's okay. I'm sure you feel bad about it. And people make mistakes. Just please send me the correct one. And don't worry about it. I love what you do. I think it's amazing. And thank you so much for taking the time to attend to this. See, that's how you deserve to be spoken to when you make a mistake. And that's how everyone treated me when I messed up that first Zoom meeting. Can you make a mistake and refuse to do what the person you harmed tells you to do? If you can't, you have to learn. Because I'll tell you what, when you make a mistake, you are the one who decides how to fix it. Now, if you know this person and they're in your life and you care about them, you can ask, how can I make this right? And you can listen. But you get to choose how much of that you're willing to do that feels like an equal exchange of energy for you. Because if they're trying to take their anger out on you and they're trying to take advantage of you because they see a weakness, that is just an especially sick form of sickness. What are you tolerating at work? Are you able to look at how you're treated when you make a mistake and start to set boundaries and say, look, mistakes are an absolute 100% certainty. There are very few things in life that are certain, but that you are gonna make a mistake is 100% certain. You have to, it's part of being a human meat sack. If you're making mistakes all the time, then something's going on and you're not broken. This place is not communicating well with you in the style that you need to be communicated with. And if you go to them and they don't care and they're not gonna attempt to work on that or try to help you figure out the issue, it's time for another job. And then maybe you ask about communication styles in the interview. If it's a relationship and there is constant miscommunication, it's not just you, it is something between the two of you. And if they're not willing to work on it, and you are, you're in the wrong relationship. Communication issues happen, and most of the time, if there are mistakes happening over and over and over and they're your fault, you're committing the mistakes repeatedly, it's not because you're inadequate, stupid, incapable, unskilled, inept, wrong, broken. There's a communication problem going on. Is it you? Do you not listen? Do you hear that all the time? Why don't you listen? See, that is one of the worst abuses anyone could ever say to somebody. You're not listening. See, that's called telling you your reality. You know you're actively listening, but you didn't hear the part they wanted you to hear. That's a processing issue. You're not broken. That's how you process information. I know people in my life that always miss the first sentence of anything I say. I know another person in my life that always misses the last sentence of everything I say. So I've changed my communication style with each person. I say to the person who misses the first sentence, 
I need to say something to you and I need you to listen. And then I watch them slowly shift. I can see the wheels turning and that processing delay. There are people who have trouble shifting from one task to another task. So I always try to be cognizant of that when I want someone's attention and they're engrossed in something else. I don't just come out bleh. I get their attention and say, can I have your attention for a minute? And I allow them the time to process and make the shift. I do this with everybody, except you, because I assume when you clicked on the video, you had already done the work to show up. <laughs> and then I say, do I have your attention? And sometimes I see them sort of wade and sort of glaze over and go, yes, now you do. And then the person that doesn't catch the last things that I say, I say it two or three times. I need to make sure that this is done by two o'clock today. Can you do that? And then I see them, their eyes are, I need it done by two o'clock today. Two o'clock. And then they look at me. Two o'clock, you need it done by two o'clock today. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, I can do that. Oh, awesome, thank you. See, if somebody's not willing to do that with you, it's time to reevaluate that relationship. You are not broken if you are always making communication errors. What it means is that you either, one, don't know your communication style. Are you neurodivergent, ADD, autistic? Are you extremely stressed out because the fight or flight response will make it so that communicating is extremely difficult and I have a video about that. I don't know if I've moved it to the website or not. It may still be here on YouTube. But if you're on a medication for panic and anxiety, that will, that will mess with your communication really bad. But you're allowed to make mistakes and all mistakes are is information. Like I made several on that first solstice retreat, but y'all, I went into it going, well, I did all the best planning that I could, but it's inevitable that mistakes are gonna happen. It's just which ones, and are they gonna hurt anyone or make people angry and they're, then they're gonna mount some campaign against me? Or is it just gonna be small little, oh well, whatever's and nobody cares, you know what I mean? So. I made the mistakes, I know what they are, and now I'm gonna be fixing them for the next one. And every time I do the solstice retreats, we'll be making them just better and better and better. <laughs> like all the mistakes I made with the tie-dye, that's what I'm doing now. I'm making sure that those mistakes don't happen next time. Winter solstice, summer solstice, if you wanna to come to a retreat, just go to the website, amnitadreamer.net, and click on the retreat tab. Come party with us like it's 572. <laughs> We're going to do it like the elders did. So, mistakes are extremely important that you actually pay attention to. If you're floating through your life, winging it when it comes to mistakes, you're doing it wrong. Do better. One, do it so that you know that everything that you attempt, there's a great possibility a mistake is going to be a part of it. Every video I make, I make a mistake in it. Some I make a lot of mistakes. Some I pay for. Everything you do, plan on the fact that there's gonna be a mistake in it. Pay attention to what happens at however you earn income. And if it's just money from the government or from a wealthy individual, so whatever, however the money gets to you, if you make errors in getting that money, either in your performance of your job or the paperwork, whatever, how are you treated about that? If you make communication errors, how does that go down? Do you know who you are? Have you paid attention to your communication style and how those errors are happening so that you can then communicate to the other people what you need so that we can fix the problem? Are they willing to do that? How do friends treat you when you make a mistake? How do acquaintances treat you when you make a mistake? How do people treat you that you try to do favors 
for or help when you make a mistake. All of these things, you need to know the answers to every one of these things. If you're doing favors for people and you make a mistake and they treat you like shit, oh God. I don't know what it is about when you do things for free for people. They, that seems to bring out the worst in people. In my former life, I used to have a newsletter and it had over 10,000 people subscribed to it. And I provided an incredible amount of information in those newsletters, equivalent to what I do for y'all in videos. And the amount of complaints and hate got so bad, I shut the whole thing down after two years. They were free information and people complained about the littlest mistakes of a link or a misspelled word. It was unbelievable. It got toxic. What is it about doing things for free for people that they get? Anyway, this is a thing in mental health is paying attention to mistakes. Who's making the mistake? In what capacity? How are you treated when you make the mistake? And are you paying attention to the same mistakes that you seem to keep making and figure out why? Try to fix it. If it's something that's not fixable, that's a part of your personality and who you are, are you able to then do the work to clarify that and then ask for that from other people? Are they willing to meet you halfway on that? Remember what I leaned in and told you I give you permission for. It's yours. You deserve it. Thanks for having coffee with me. I love you, beautiful people. I hope you have a good day. I love you.